I don't, I don't, I don't want to mention anything just yet. Just hold on, hold on. Okay, guys. First, I want to say to you, thank you for all you guys coming in here. I appreciate all the even the new people that are coming to see Zondo. If you guys don't know, I'm not just a person who like makes videos like highlights. I've started to switch my content that on Kick, I want to live stream and interview every single one of the people that are put in the videos. Right. I'm trying to interview as much people as I can that we put in the videos and then I'm going to upload every single interview on the main channel and link it to their channels. Who are you? So I'll answer now. <clears throat> I'm from Austin, Texas. Um, I kind of happened. I stumbled upon streaming. Actually, it was because of Fern uh, about town. She's a streamer here in Thailand. I was here. Uh, just kind of having a good time. First time in Thailand. I ran into Fern. She was a streamer. And uh, she needed a phone to stream because her phone had died. So I let her borrow my phone. And she put Twitch on my phone. And um, so I, I, um, after she streamed, I had the app. And I, I figured, what the hell? I'm going to play with this a little bit. And I, I initially started on Twitch. And then uh, when I went to uh, Thailand again... I, I met a streamer called Mr. Sins, and he told me I should definitely uh, stream on Kick because they're a lot more lenient. And so that's how I started. What problems did you face on Twitch? I wasn't getting paid much. I was in Austin. I was streaming Austin. Um, I, I would usually a average maybe about 20 or 30 viewers. And, uh, but, but even before that, I had like 10 people that were consistent, that would show up. And uh, I had a small community, but it was good. They were, they were always there for me. And, and, you know, what's funny is, you know, the small community that I had in Austin, they, act, they paid for half my trip to come to Thailand. I quit my job. I didn't know what was going to happen. I, I just wanted to give it a try. And uh, when I got here, I hung out, you know, I met Sins. You know, I, I met, you know, Fern About Town. Um, I met a few other streamers. And it just had a good time. You know, 31 Nismo, Boyfly. You know, and this was before Khan came into town. And um, yeah, I would stream with those guys and we ended up having a good time. And, so, uh, and I, I, yeah. What position were you doing before this? Like, what was your career that you did? I, I was a shuttle driver in Austin, Texas. I was working for a hotel. I would pick up airline crew members from the airport. It was fun working at a hotel. Do you have any crazy stories? The husband wanted me to receive fellatio from his wife. Um, this guy wanted his wife to give me a blowjob, and uh, he wanted to watch. And, uh, and, and, I, and I, met a, I met a few flight attendants, too. And uh, I went out with a couple you know, flight attendants and some guests. <laughs> it is Austin. So I saw a lot of crazy things. Um, you know, there was a lot of people, like homeless during uh, corona. And um, so a lot of homeless people would try to sleep in the garage or it, you know they, they would try to find a, a warm spot to sleep in during the winter so you know you got to see a lot you know and I, actually at my hotel someone jumped off uh six stories high from the swimming pool and he was naked and he fell right to the garage uh cement floor oh my god yeah so, like so his, yeah you saw a lot yeah much. yeah yeah and i saw him i saw him on the ground and um I, you know, I thought he was dead, but I think he died eventually at the hospital. I mean, I live in Asia, yeah. guys, and I, it's not a competition, but like in most apartments, the actual windows all have the burglar guards set up because right. in Asia, right. pe people jump most of the time. Mm. They commit suicide. Yeah. yeah. Like in different ways. Yeah. yeah. That's wild. The godfather of IRL is located. So, like, did you watch any live streaming? You know what's funny? Uh, yeah, like, Ice lives in Austin. And, uh, and I know Murda, too. You know, and Murda started with Ice. And he knows Sam Pepper. He knows all those guys. And uh, I, didn't, I, I, I didn't know the history of any of those guys. I, I, you know, and, um, you know, and when I did hear about Ice Poseidon and Sam Pepper, all I heard was negative things. So and, I'm, and so it's and, and to be honest, I've never looked at their history. I don't know what they've done. And so all I know is, he, you know, he lives in Austin. And, and now uh, my friend Ton is going out to uh, 
Austin, my hometown, and I'm here in Patia. So he's going to be leaving for the Hunger Games. And so, and it, you know, a part of me wanted to kind of go along just because I want to, you know, I like to go see my family. I don't miss Austin. You know, I just miss my family. So you chose to get into live streaming and you started with Twitch, yes. you said. How come you didn't do yes. like making videos on YouTube? I've always liked it, the, the live aspect of things, the spontaneity, you know, being who you are. And um, I feel like when you do YouTube, I, I call it the anchor syndrome. People tend to change the way they speak and who they are just to present a persona that's palatable for everybody. And I've never been that way. You know, I, I'm just who I am. So YouTube is something I didn't want to do. And, you know, and then plus the long editing hours. And, you know, I'm living, I'm doing things that most people can't do. So, and, and, and I, I really appreciate it. And, I'm, and, and to be honest, I'm having the time of my life. When you were on Twitch, were you getting like good donations as you get on? No. Game? I got, I got some people did try to help me because, you know, I was a struggling streamer. I, you know, I had a job. I mean, it wasn't like I was starving, but a lot of my money did go to bills and helping my family um, and dog food for my dogs. Um, I made sure they were OK before I was OK. So why did you choose to go to Thailand? Um, actually, I kind of stumbled upon it. I was going to I had an ex-girlfriend in the Philippines that I would go see. I've known her for 15 years. We were dating for 15 years. And I, uh, I would go to the Philippines quite a bit. But then um, we broke up and, you know, for, you know, there's some good reasons as to why. And, um, and I, I just said, you know what, I'm going to go to Thailand. Because of COVID, I wasn't able to travel for three years. So I had a lot of time, vacation time. And, uh, and I saved up a lot of money. And so what I did was, I, with all the money saved, I, I decided to come to Thailand because I used to watch Mr. Sins and I used to watch Bangkok 420, the lifestyle that they had and what, what, what they were doing. And I said, I got I to gotta see this for myself. So I came out here and um, I really like it. I really do. And did you expect to meet like other streamers? Because now there's like a freaking group of streamers in Thailand. I met some famous streamers that I used to watch, uh, like Suspenders. I, I used to watch him uh, when he was in Tokyo. When he had like eight people watching him, I remember Suspender saying, I'm going to make it one day with this. And he did, which I thought was really wild. You know, I met uh, Cook Sucks, you know, on Twitch. I met uh, Unicorn 19 in Austin. I met Ginny TTY in Austin. I met Plumy and Yummy. They're all South Korean streamers. Um, and then, you know, I, I kind of wanted to play with the idea. I mean, Cook Sucks, when I met him, said, You should try streaming in Austin. You, you got a pretty decent personality. You should give it a shot. And I, and I said, no way. I'll never stream. And here we are. Japan suspenders or Thailand suspenders? To be honest, I, did, I, I didn't really watch a lot of the uh, Thailand suspenders. I thought he was, you know, he was this, he was this uh, you know, fresh-faced kid in Japan. You know, I didn't know what he was. I didn't know if he was, you know, white or, like, or if he was mixed because he had a, a, a look about him. And uh, but I just knew he had a personality and his voice was pretty distinctive. Was there any difference between meeting suspenders in real life versus suspenders that you see on streams? When I met him, I thought he was a super nice guy. Uh, I thought he was really nice. He was really personable. He was very accommodating. Uh, super nice guy. I, I, you know, I know there's a history. Like I said, you know, it's funny. I hear a lot of history about different streamers like, you know, Ice Poseidon. And, uh, you know, all these streamers, you know, that supposedly have bad reputations. I, I'm, I don't know these guys. I, di I don't know their story. So when I met a couple of these streamers, you know, of course, when you meet someone, you put your best, you know, face forward. And, you know, you want to be personal and you just want to be, you know, cordial. And uh, so that's what I that's what, what I met. I mean, I, you know, I haven't hung out with them to know who they really are. I get you. So you just need maybe more time. Do the Thailand streamers hang out with each other off camera? But I, I also know that some streamers, they want to be on their own because they have their own brand. And, you know, and they, you know, and they don't want to mesh too much with other streamers. Uh, you know, because, again, you know, they want to keep, you know, a, 
uh, they want to keep their brand. Like you look at Tan, he's got his own brand. Um, and so he's always, you know, he's used to being, you know, he used to live in his car. I, I think psychologically he's used to being on his own, moving around on his own, you know? And with me, I'm kind of the same way because when I stream, I used to stream with my cousin when I was in Austin, but I, uh, but I like streaming by myself too, because I, I, I'm, 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 I have a little ADHD and I like, I kind of, I like the spontaneity of it. So, you know, if I feel like I want to go this way, I'm going to go that way. But when I go there, I want to go another direction. So I go that direction. Have you ever had kick staff come into your stream and say like, Hey, don't, don't do that. Yes. Yes. What happened? Yeah. Uh, um, uh, I've had, uh, you know, when you show a little too much, when you're at the lady bars, you know, you, you're, especially when you're drinking, you can have a little bit too much fun and you can show a little too much, you know, a little, a little overexposure that would happen. And I also got banned for like an hour because of, uh, I was drunk and I was, uh, you know, I was a little too touchy feely, I guess. <laughs> And, you know, and yeah, and, the, and, was, and some of the girls, you know, of course, they're in thongs and, uh, you know, sometimes they, they wear see through material. I was at a I was at a bar once and this guy was upset that I was talking to these three girls. I guess he liked one of them. And so what he did, he put his pants down in, in front of my camera and, and he showed his hairy ass. Another guy who uh, I went to the restroom. I had just met this guy and I was at a go go bar. And he, and he had this girl stand in front of the camera and, and he took off the, her top in front of my, and luckily, you know, at the time I wasn't, I wasn't on the KCIP program or anything. I had to delete the VOD because I didn't know I was in a restroom. Worst part about streaming is when you're in Asia, you got to start like from 11 at night and roll through like right. five, six, eight right. in the morning. So right. for IRL, it's okay, I guess, but desktop it's a i mean it's a yeah i mean but but the, but that's when i do get the numbers and and if you have good content like and uh, it, it could be fun i mean you know content varies you know i, I try to change up my content I, I like being at the lady bars but i i also like just walking around and i like to just discover new places i mean i've, I've been chased by soy dogs which was uh was not fun because i when i was a kid I got chased by dogs. And so I've got a little, uh, you know, history with that. When you, you know, when you have your speaker on your shoulder and you have the voices playing, you know, it freaks out the dogs. Are you yeah. cooking your own food or are you just eating out every day? No, um, I do cook some food. You know, I, you know, I uh, in the, just breakfast mainly. I'll buy some eggs and bacon and cheese and bread and I'll have like an egg sandwich in the morning. But when I'm out and about, I usually buy Thai food because it's super cheap. Do you ever get tired? It's soup. Because like... Oh, the food? I've been... Not only just the food, but when I was in Thailand, chat, I've been there. I've been to Phuket, mm -hmm. Bangkok, and Chiang Mai. I spent six months in Thailand. So pretty much you get... Well, me personally, I got bored at the amount of temples there are. Like, I feel like once you've seen one temple, you've seen all. But that's, that's anywhere on this planet. You know, people say, oh, I'm getting tired. You know, it's the same content. It's the same city. It's like, yeah, you live in your city. You do the same things every day. It's a mundane life. The image of Thailand, okay? This is going to be a hard yeah. question on you, but you know in the Western world and freaking even in Korea for me, when a, mm. a single guy says he's going to Thailand, what, yeah. do, what do you think the first image that goes into people's heads? When girls, of course. I mean, you know, I, I, I find it funny that a lot of people, you know, even it, wherever you're from, sex plays a vital role. It's like the primary role of our existence. You, you either repress that shit and you, and you get all goofy about it and you think it's fucking uh, taboo or you embrace it. And um, you come to, you know, you come to Thailand, you know, the, you know, it's just set up the way it is because of its history. And, uh, and of course, some people take advantage of it, obviously. And, um, and, you know, I, for one, don't like to call, you know, there's a lot of guys that would call them bitches, hoes and prostitutes. Right. 
I don't like to call women that period. And, um, but, you know, but I know what it is, but you know, there's no need. There's, there's no need to, you know, to like vilify them like that. Did anyone hit you with this line? Oh, he's going to Thailand. We know what he's going to do. He's going to buy some pum pum. This guy can't get anything in his country. He can't get anything right. in any of the other countries. So he has to go to right. Thailand to buy the pum pum. Right. Right. That, that, that's just male machismo. This, they, you know, guys just want to feel good about themselves. Who gives a fuck? I mean, why do you care so much that you got to, you know, put down somebody else for doing what they're doing? And, um, you know, he's able, if a person's able to do it, why not come out here and enjoy yourself? But because of like Christian Judeo morality, they, they, you know, and, and the culture that you come from, I'm, I'm speaking of America. Of course, they're, they're going to try to bash whoever, you know, is out here. I get it. The question I have for you is you in Thailand you meet this girl at this bar but then in your back of your mind does it ever cross you that oh maybe my friend tony was with her yesterday uh does it bother no uh no nah. not to be honest no i mean you know what it is here and you know it, it it's not like you're getting laid every day a lot of people think you know uh, a lot of times, you know, a lot of the girls choose who they want to hang out with. Guys think they can just come here with money and, and get together with whoever they want. It's not the case. You know, the, the, the girls obviously got to like you. You know, they can say no, and they do say no. Yeah. So they make From the dreams. money, money. Yeah. Yeah, some of these girls make a lot more money than, uh, believe it or not, doctors. And a lot of people think, oh, you know, I'll bring you back to America. And what's funny is, and the reason why it doesn't work, because here in Thailand, it's Saturday every day. They go back to America and they find some j job at a hotel, some nine to five. And they're just they're like, what, what the fuck? You know, and then and people just ignoring them. You know, here they get all the attention they want. They make a ton of money. I have a physical question to ask you. What is yeah. it with all these Thai girls having like barcodes and like long lengthy tattoos on their backs? My understanding is a lot of the tattoos are just uh, tattoos of Buddhism. Is this type of atmosphere really costly yeah. on you? Because you got to go to bars, you got to take these girls out from the bars, you got to pay a bar fine there. Yeah, yeah. I don't do it all the time. I, I, I usually just bite, a lot of times I just I scream from the bars. And have the girls dance for just for content, and I'm, I'm I dance as well. I'm just having fun with them. I don't I don't I don't bar fine every time. I, as a matter of fact, that that would get too costly. I'm not I'm not a big streamer. So are you saying that you are really Casanova and you're able to pull them out of the bar without paying? No, the bar fine? I'm not saying that. that. No, no, no. No, I'm saying I'm not Casanova, and I don't have the money to take them out. <laughs> I usually come out. A lot of times, I come, I come home alone. That is crazy, yeah. chat. Come on, his viewers. Yeah. That is yeah. crazy because when we watch his stream, he's always with a girl, and the girl is like really no, close I mean, to him. Yeah, some, yeah, but that's that's sometimes it's not all the time. And you know, again, they'll, they'll be close to you when you're streaming, when you're at the bar. But you know, if you, you know, if, if you don't have like money to bar find and stuff like that, or or you know, because I just spend a lot of money on drinks, I don't want to spend any more, so I just I do it for the content. And chat, we need to bring this to light as well. I saw Zondo doing this, which I thought was kind of good. He does this thing where, like, if people donate money, then he buys mm -hmm. the drink for the girl. Right. And he doesn't right. have to do anything. She doesn't have to do anything to him either. It's like right. she makes money from the donation you guys send. So this is my question to you, Zondo. Doing this, is it profitable? For, the, for what I charge, I actually lose money. But... Because I do it for content and with the KCIP program, I, you know, I eventually turned into a profit. Sins was the uh, original guy to do this. And uh, I was lucky enough that, you know, we became good friends and he allowed me to stream with him. And, um, and, 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 and even to this day, I, I, I don't like to encroach like in areas where he goes to because, you know, that, that's his, you know, I, I just don't want to do that. Do you feel comfortable? pulling out this camera and streaming in like these bars. I got pressured one time. I knew that I knew the manager of one bar, but this guy, the, but the, the manager wasn't around and these guys got upset because, you know, I put out the camera thinking it was okay because I've been there a number of times 
And um, and then I I got you know I got pressured and I got um, I got pressed basically from like three guys, three big guys, and and luckily I didn't get into any big trouble. You know I I was I was cool, I was sober. I, you know, I don't want to get in trouble. I didn't want to go to, uh, I didn't want to get kicked out of the country. Um, so I, you know, I, I basically just kind of left. I was like looking for the manager, but the manager wasn't around. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, there's, pe- there's some people who really hate the camera. So I, now I try to be, after that incident, I, I've learned to be a, a, a little more conscious of when, of when and how I put, you know, just pull out the camera and where I aim. Oh, nice. That's the biggest rating. Nice. For the host. Yeah. Nice. Thank you so much, Chris. But I want to interview you, Chris, and I'll put it on YouTube. So, like, if his mods are in here, please convince him. I want to interview him also. But thank you. I really nice. appreciate uh, what you're doing for me, dude. I'm telling you, man, you're, you're, a, you're a force in this industry now. People know who you are, brother. And I think a lot more people are going to be helping out more as well. I think it's a it's a mutual symbiotic relationship. In the near future, I'm planning to, to uh, do a little more traveling. You know, I kind of want to stream from the Philippines for a week or two because uh, I have a friend, John. What's going on? Who's going? He's going to go out there, and uh, we talked about maybe going out there for like a week or two. So I want to go to the Philippines, and I want to go to Vietnam. Oh, and you know, I want to go to Cambodia, Laos. And I, you know, I know a lot of other streamers have already done it, but it's always about your own experience with that country. So yeah, we'll your, see what happens. Your interests may be different than other people. So understand that. Right. I, I kind of get that as right. well. Right. Now, yeah. people like Chris, for example, and Joel, they do mm. streams with subathons and they do challenges right. inside of this. Have you ever right. done these type of streams? I, I've done subathons for um, bungee jumping and I've bungee jumped. So uh, Chad actually paid for the bungee jump. Uh, tomorrow's my birthday, so I'm I'm gonna be doing a birthday subathon tomorrow. Uh, people call me like a sex pat, you know. They're saying, "Oh, you're a sex pat, you're a degen." You know what's funny? Um, the shit that I do here is what I do in Austin. You know, you just have fun, and you know, if liking women is a sex pat, well, fucking call me a sex pat. What he just said is going the wrong path because he does more than this, guys. He does more than this. From right. what I've seen, Zondo actually streams during the day, the morning times. Right. He's sitting down yeah. talking to chat. He does a lot of just yapping. I've, I've noticed this. Yeah. And it's kind of good because if you want to ask yeah. him questions and he's like sitting at a restaurant, he'll talk to you, whatever you want to know. Yeah. And, so, that, and not just that, but I, I've done like, um, you know, like uh, the, uh, what's it called? Uh, I, I've done the adventure parks. I've written on elephants. You know, I've done uh, zip lining. You know, I've done the ATVs, uh, you know, I've done the uh, dune buggies, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to di- diversify. I mean, it, it gets pretty crazy, man. But to be honest, I've met a lot of interesting people streaming. You know, I've, I've come across people, some of the most fascinating people, because I'm actually out there walking around. You ever ran into problems with the cops? You guys, you already know it. Almost all of CX were almost locked away forever. Um, um, luckily the incident here, there were no cops around. I got lucky there. Um, when I was in Austin, I mean, just being down sixth street and you're streaming and when the cops are on horses and they're trying to push people away, you know, to be honest, I've, I've been okay. I've always been aware of the cops, so I've never really gotten in trouble. He gave me some really good advice once, uh, murder. Oh, uh, he hit me up, he hit me up one time and he gave me some really good advice about certain things. Ben has given me some good advice about other things. Um, I've had some streamers give me some good advice. Ton has given me some advice as well. And I've had people in chat give me some good advice. And then what about like these bars? Have you ever ran into problem like with the security or the owner of the actual place? Um, I've had a couple of managers who... You know, I got kicked out of a few bars at, uh, because I knew the manager before and, and because they rotate often, a new manager would say, hey, you can't stream here. And I would say, no, I, I've streamed here before. And it wasn't really an altercation, just a little argument. And then, you know, eventually I just had to leave. So I left. You would, as you said, not always with the woman, with some women, 
You ever catch mm-hmm. anything? Like any STD? No, I haven't caught no, I've never caught anything here. Uh, no. I've always wore I always wore a condom. Even in America, I wore a condom. Even when you're like completely drunk, you kind of walk straight and you take a whole yeah. really? Yeah. Only twice uh, have I not used it here in Thailand. But that was on a prior that, that was like the first time I got here. But I, I I had been tested back in America and I didn't have anything. So are you You know, I took a blood yeah, blood are you hundred yeah. percent? Like there's no little zondo running around from these two encounters? Yes. Yes. I, I wear condoms every time. No, you told me the I, two I, encounters you didn't. Yeah, but uh but no, I was more concerned about STDs and uh it's, I got blood tested and I got urine tested. Right, we're going to switch topics to lady boys. Now, guys, in Thailand... Oh, shit. Rookie, Rookie just came so in for that. Many. There is so okay. many lady boys, like you can't believe. I know. And there's different right. varieties. There's like the lady boy that still looks like a dude. Literally still looks like a dude, 1,000%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then there's yeah, the yeah. one that's like got big boobs, but still looks like yeah. a dude. And then yep. there's the one that kind of looks like a lady as hard as it can be because some of them even get the surgery for the Adam's apple. Right. Right. So it's no, dangerous. No. It's, listen, I've seen lady boys that are absolutely stunning. I mean, I've, I've actually gone up to a couple thinking they were girls. And, um, and I, I've, I've been fooled. I've never been in bed with one, but I was fooled enough to walk up to one and say, wow, you're beautiful. And then when they spoke, it was like, thank you. It was a guy's voice. Yeah, they do that weird <laughs> thing with their voice where it's like squ- yeah. kind of squeaky. So like you just know yeah. it's... That's the one thing they can't fix. That's the one thing they can't right. fix. Well, I, I, like I said, they're stunning though. Some of them are 100% stunners. I'm not even kidding. And I'm not even gay. But they are stunners. You never had one like come and like, I don't know, like ride you in the bar or something like this? Uh, uh, I've had... One put her hands in my shorts, and and can I? I don't know if I can say this, but yeah, I, I, I put my and she cupped my balls. Uh, so and that's the truth. I laugh because guys, I was in a bar. I always tell the story all the time. I was in a bar in a nightclub yeah. in uh, Phuket, right? And I remember seeing the, the middle of this dance floor, and this lady boy went around the whole dance floor, and she kissed yeah. like over fifty. I can tell they were like white European dudes. And she was just kissing yeah. each one and moving. And then when she left, I just <laughs> looked at her and I was like, lady boy. So yeah. like, these guys don't know their lives were changed forever after that moment. The experiences I had and what I see from you guys is not the same. I want to say that right okay. now. Could be because I was Why, there, why like, so? I need to think back. When was it? 2015? Yeah, 2015. So it's almost like nine, nine almost 10 years ago. It's a long time ago. Okay. okay? So right. I'll show you how. Right, guys? Now I will become degenerate for a moment. So about 10 years ago, I was young, young. You need to think that. I was young, young. Right now I'm 29, so okay. I'm like 19 at that point. I ain't 19, right? Yeah, so like I've been, tra- I've been traveling from 18, pretty much. Like I was in, in, in my country, like I wasn't a kid that like listened to like my parents a lot. So it's like I just did whatever I wanted to do, pretty much. So right. right. I went to, to Phuket. This was the first time I went. I went for like just, what was it, like two and a half weeks in Phuket. Mm-hmm. And what I realized was that at most of these places, you don't need to sit down and talk to a girl. You don't need to have a drink with a girl. You don't have to do any of those things. Pretty much, you just look for the Mama Chan, who is the lady that runs the whole joint. And the Mama Chan, yeah. You literally break a deal with her and you look at mm. all the women as if it's like picking right. out candy from the vending machine. It's pretty much like this. <laughs> yeah. In some cases, guys, I didn't even speak to the person. That's how crazy it was. It's literally like you drop right. your cash, you go to the back. They yeah. actually got like some of these places like in Phuket that's way more pricey. They've literally got like hotels right next to it. It's literally like this. <laughs> so like everything yeah, yeah, yeah. this guy is doing, I don't even, I don't even know what that is. Because I've seen what what it actually is like, and it's nothing like what these guys yeah. are showing on camera. Yeah. And then I went back to Bangkok when I was 22, and that was like my most degenerate time, Zondo. If I tell you this, you will say to me, dude, you are insane. 
I worked in, yeah. in Saudi Arabia, guys. And so in, in Saudi Arabia, you don't ever hear a woman, ever. You don't even see a woman. And that was like nine months. So I was right. like, I needed to like bust off some steam. So right. I went, I took 6,000 US dollars and I went to Bangkok. Right. And like I, right. was, I was buying like the most amount of weed I ever bought in my life. I stayed in like yeah. the most expensive hotels you can think of. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I was taking home like maybe two, three women at a time. It was degenerate. Right. It was yeah. nine days. Right. I'm telling you right now, it was nine days, $6,000 in nine days. That was yeah. the most wow. degenerate thing I've ever done. Because it's my first time. Nine days. To see. You spent all $6,000 yep. in nine days. Uh, I blew it on Holy everything shit. you can think of. Every single thing you can think of. You know, so yeah. it's, it's because... It's because when you go and work in the Middle East, this is for people now, like if you are normal people and you want to get normal jobs, if you want to see the most money you ever like seen in your life, go work in Dubai right. or go work in Saudi Arabia. Mm. So I worked in Saudi Arabia, very strict, but right. the money I made was insane. Like I worked like for yeah. four hours a day, pretty much most of the time. You know, yeah. So. But there's nothing to do. Wow, but, but but you they can't do. see women. You said when you're in Dubai, like they're, they're no, no, covered, in Dubai, right? Dubai, you can't. Nah, Dubai is crazy. Oh, Dubai is okay. Like 60 I've never been there, so I don't know. I've always okay. You save up your money, and you must do Dubai IRL. It's amazing because there's a lot of like Whoa. Russians, there's a lot of European yeah. European people there, and it's more open and free. But Saudi, yeah. Saudi is strict as hell. It's very closed. Mm. The way you'd meet a woman yeah. in, in Saudi, which is like, this is going to sound, again, completely degenerate. So the way you mm. meet a woman in Saudi Arabia, it's mostly nurses from Philippines. So you would literally, yeah. you would literally go to a hospital. Listen to how degenerate this sounds. My friend was a Pakistani guy, and I saw how he right. does it. So he would go to the hospital, and he would drop like right. a piece of paper with his number on it, and the nurse would mm. grab it and squash it up. And then she'd text him, and then he would book a room as if she is his wife and she would dress up fully Whoa. clothed. That's actually dangerous. Ah. That's insane, right? Wow. You have to go to the hospital. Interesting. That's insane. No, because that's where all the, the Filipinos work. They work as nurses. No else. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I see. To put it in perspective, I think most of the times I, I had to feel people's necks. I, that was my one thing. I had to feel people's necks. But then again, you know it. You know, the longer you live there, guys you realize that the lady boys are the ones that have like big asses or like big boobs, for yeah. example. And like the yeah, yeah, skinny yeah. body is the normal woman. Most of the, most of the time, usually most of the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, and then, so, okay. yeah, it's, 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 fa it's fascinating. Yeah. Oh, oh, I got another question. Have you been to massage sure. parlors? Yes. What are they like? <laughs> Uh, very good. <laughs> they're, they're awesome. Now, we've seen, for example, Deepak. We've also seen it recently with Chris Travels. When they are in different mm. countries and they go to these massage parlors and they, they say, can I right. get a happy ending? Something mm. bad happens. Now, I'm not saying you're looking for this, but I'm asking you hypothetically, <laughs> if you were, it's how fun. would you yeah. go about asking them for this? Because I'm sure there's guys in the chat who want to learn. What to say? Um, I mean, I mean, people. Yeah, it's funny because, I mean, <laughs> well, it's 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 simple enough. You just go underneath the sheets naked. You know what I mean? And, you know, and that that kind of gives the uh, vibe of what what the deal is. And does it become like a like a package meal? Like they literally say, okay, I'm gonna do this, this, this. Cost, 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 cost. Um, I mean. It's some in some places it's, it's understood the massage problem. That's what it is. You know, it's like you know, I mean, like even in Austin, you know, it's you know, you just kind of go under underneath the sheets. It's everywhere. No, oh, you're have... getting bodied with something. Oh man! Okay, wait. We need to switch to maybe follower mode. Yeah, do that. I don't, oh. You might want to do that. Oh, it stopped. It stopped. Here you go. I think you're okay. Has anyone called you a leech? My own chat has called me leech. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But as far as other streamers, you know, um, I got accused of being one, and I, I explained my situation. I said, listen, man, I'm not a fucking leech, man. I, I, so, you know, it's, I, there's this one streamer, 
I said, you know, I, I just know who you are. And I, you know, I, and I hope you don't think I'm trying to leech off of you. But, but I, I, you know, to be honest, I've met a lot of these streamers pretty organically. The only one I've ever asked to uh, actually kind of snipe, you know, recently was Murda. And so I, I, I went to his chat or his stream and, and I was in his chat and I said, hey, man, um, I'm from Austin, Texas. I'm a small streamer. I'm going to be going to Thailand. I know you're going to be in Thailand at the same time. Would it be okay if I, you know, said hello? And uh, he was a little reluctant, but he allowed me to. And then when we, when we met, we actually got along really well. And now we're friends. You and Murder in the Discord, where it yeah. looks like Murder is like bullying you. What would you say yeah. to that? Um, he, that? He and I both know we have different, you know, ideologies and philosophies about life. But we, and, um, and it's kind of the same with me and some other streamers. But because we're, we are friends, we get along, we, we, we like to hang around with each other. And, and, you know, and that's with everybody. Yeah. The thing is, I want to say this to you, right? People have corrupted the word networking with leeching. Mm, right. Like you streaming with murder gives him content to see a new person on the stream. He's maybe talking mm. to you about his life. You talking to him about yeah. your life and you do activities yeah. that you wouldn't usually do. That is new right. content on both sides. But I don't yeah. know, like in this community, it's like if you, you're a bigger streamer and somebody streams with you, automatically it's like this person is just trying to steal your viewers. They don't really care about you, things like this. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think it's pretty obvious when someone's leeching. Um, you know, when they, when they don't know you and then they're acting like, you know, you're their best friend. You know, I can understand if it was like very organic and, you know, and, and, you're, and, and you guys actually talk to each other and getting to know each other. But um, but I, I've seen I've seen some streamers recently, you know, uh, because of a bad situation in America. I, you know, I've seen some people like just call out names, just begging for these big streamers to talk about a certain topic that was happening. And I, and it, you know, I, th I thought that was odd. I'm glad Boyfly has a lot of patience. Boyfly is a super nice guy. And uh, he had a lot of patience with me because your restriction for movement can be really annoying because you forget. Like you just, you just want to grab something or you just want to eat normal and you can't do it. And, or if you have to pit or you just got, or if you want to, you know, even sleeping was, it became a nightmare. It was one of ISIS events you were supposed to take part in, right? Or something like yeah, that. Yeah, the prison, the prison stream. Yeah, I was in, I was in Austin, and I was, uh, I was streaming. Uh, it was a day when I was not going to stream, but I decided to stream and go to the University of Texas. And, uh, and I was just going to go walk around and maybe chat up, you know, pe people there, play some music. I was, and, and I wanted to show the university. I wanted to show the football field, the baseball field, and what, what have you, the, uh, the track and field. And uh, as I was walking through... Andy Milanakis and uh, uh, Gary David, they both raided me at the same time. And then they started talking to me and, um, and they were asking if I was ready to go to prison. And I guess they were scouting me out for the prison stream. And I didn't know who D Gary David was. You know, I was like, do you know who Gary David? I'm like, I have no idea who you are. I'm sorry. Which I didn't know. <laughs> and, um, but I kind of knew who Andy Milanakis was because he streamed with uh, Tutsats, and he also streamed with Unicorn 19. So I kind of knew who he was. But uh, so when, when they said it was Andy Milanakis, I was like, whoa, I know that guy. Um, and, so, and, and, and Andy gifted me 20 subs. And I, I guess uh, Gary David's um, chat kind of pressured him to give, to give to me as well. So he gave me 20. And then Andy gave me another 20. And and, I, and then Gary, you know, I, they're kind of competing, so I was getting all these wow, subs. That's good, man. Yeah. And no one and, called and, you and, a and it, it, No one called you a scammer. No. No. Blind? That's I, weird, what right? happened? No one called him a scammer. Yeah. That's kind of weird. Yeah. So there was yeah they were gift subbing me, and they were they were watching my stream as I was walking around the University of Texas, and um, and Andy was kind of you know because Andy's a comedian, so he was saying a bunch of funny shit about me and Lady Boys. And, uh, and, and to this day, Andy still jumps on my stream. When I first started watching you, you used to have this goal at the top. 
please sub. Mm. If you sub, then I can stay in Thailand. I want to ask right. you, how were you feeling during those first couple of months? Like when you had that banner at the top? I was always anxious because I didn't know if I was going to be coming home or not. So I was always trying to come up with subathons, um, you know, things to do to stay here. And so I, 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 to be honest, I did a lot more when I first started coming here, and especially to stay here. I, um, everyone knew that I didn't have money. You know, I, I wasn't a rich guy. Um, and I, like I said, you know, I had one guy pay for half my trip and he, and he still comes on my chat. And then, um, and I, and I know of a few other people that have supplied me to stay here, uh, with, with like mics and uh, obviously my room. Um, yeah. So I, I'm forever, you know, and, you know, grateful for that. Who is your lady boyfriend? I, I I have no idea that that's made up. That's I, that's Ton Scab denying his love of lady boys. Yeah. They are okay. Here, let me tell you what where the basis of that comes from. Um, I was giving an opportunity of like fifteen hundred dollars. I think it's three hundred subs if I were to make out with a lady boy, and I I've said it time and time again. I would never do it. No, no, no. And even if it cost me, if I had to go back home, I, I said I would never do it. I was walking around a, a tree town here on Soy Bukau, and there was a, this girl. She was kind of tall, and she did have some broad shoulders a little bit, right? And I only saw her from behind. And the guys were telling me, oh, check out that girl in front of you. And I looked, and I'm like, I said, no, I said hell no, that's a lady boy. Because that's just from the behind, that's what I thought. <laughs> and so it, so I was supposed to go meet this other girl, right? But you know, I, I got curious, so I wanted to get a closer look at this at this at this girl, or at this lady boy, a girl that I thought was a lady boy. So when I went up to her, it turned out that she was actually one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen, one of the most sexy women I've ever got to meet. And and for, and you know, and, and in the beginning I thought it was a lady boy. And so she got the nickname Kevin because I thought it was a lady boy. And I ended up hanging, I ended up hanging out with her. And, um, and she was one of the most amazing women I've ever got to meet. And uh, super sexy. I mean, stunning. And, uh, and she think I thought she was a lady boy. You was attracted they to know, her. They know everything about behind. me. No, they're quoting you. Jazondo <laughs> 2024. They're going to use this yeah. against you, pretty much. Did you ever have two okay. bar girls fight over you? I did have one get kind of upset over the other, yes. And then do you enjoy playing TTS? Yeah. Text to speech. Yeah. So, like I said earlier, some of these guys are the best when it comes to the voices. You know, Rookie, Masood. The recent TTS that I used, that's a very sexy girl. And some of these guys... They know how to use that girl's voice. <laughs> they know how to use the voice. Yeah, they become the character of the voice. Like Samuel L. Jackson, they'll, they'll say things Samuel L. Jackson would say. But on the flip side, <laughs> flip side, one moment, yeah. flip side. Yeah. You ever went for a okay. serious massage, but they want to sell you yes. the other massage? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, it's happened quite a few times. And, uh, you know, there's a woman here. She's probably the best massage I've ever gotten in my life. When you do, um, I'm sorry. When you do um, Thai massage, there are certain stretches that they do that hurt. And, 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 and but because you don't usually stretch like that, after you're done, you feel like a completely uh, different person. Oh, that's good. I think if you do lots yeah. of walking too, and you go for leg massages, it's can be good for you. Yeah, your massages Especially are always when they, and when they do women. the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I tried a guy once and I couldn't do it. What yeah. visa are you currently on? I'm. A, I just got the uh, retirement visa, so I'm able to be here for 15 months. When you when you're 50, you can get a retirement visa. Dang, that's a good one. That's a good to get. Uh... Yeah. A visa that yeah. Last so I, I, yeah, yeah. So I'm able to be here, yeah. And uh, oh, another thing about you know, you wanted to talk about the uh, KCIP. So no, it's KCIP okay. KCIP is something 
that you can earn a whole lot of money by doing this. Right. First question right. to Zondo. Is KCIP something that you can retire on? Uh, no. I mean, if you have people like, if you have like three, four, five hundred, or even a thousand and, and up, you're going to make really good money. You know, if you if you have like one or two hundred people watching, you know, it's more of a supplement than a substitute. You know what I mean? So it's supplementing your income. It's not becoming your income. So, but if you're, if, but if you get like 500 up, you can live off of that. Uh, but I, I, you know, the only time I get numbers, like I've ever got close to that, which I have a, a couple of times is when I go, when I'm at the lady bars, but you know, when, when you're at the lady bar, you spend a lot of money and because I've spent money, I spent money on a server, buying a bicycle, uh, my camera, my uh, was cracked. So I had to fix my phone. And then uh, I, I had to pay a year in advance for the internet here at my condo. I put a lot of that money back in after the my subathon. Um, but I'm hoping, you know, but as, as soon as I start doing well again, I can start doing more content like that. And and, and those numbers, they 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 are they are big. You know, it's a lot of fun, and it's crazy fun. I mean, it's the best job you could have, in my opinion. I mean, we're by the beach. There's nothing but beautiful women walking around. Uh, if you, you know, you can go, you can go to all these places and have the best times of your life. I mean, it's, cr you know, it, the best clubs I've ever been to. Yes. Yes. I was going to go to it. You don't have to give exact figures, but if I had to say low scale, medium scale, high scale, where, we, where would mm. we put Zondo? Right now, low scale, because I, you know, I'm not doing a lot. If you see 300 and up, that's mid scale, right? But when you get thousand and up, you're making big time money. Okay. And, and like I said, uh, smooth skin is very important to me, Melissa. <laughs> um, no, it, it, stay, it, stay it on really kicks. I don't know. I, 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 um, yeah, but right now, it's, it's okay. Like I said, it's supplemental money. It, you know, I'm, it's allowing me to stay here. Uh, can I do whatever I want? No. So, you know, so I, I always say it, it's, it's more of a supplement than a substitute. You know what I mean? So that's how I see it. Is your KCIP capped or can you raise it whenever you feel like? You can, um, my understanding, I can stream as long as I want. And again, it's about keeping the numbers there. If you don't have the numbers, you're not making money. Uh, so let's yeah. say I you stream got, you, you know, two hours. Let me give you an example. I stream two okay. hours or three hours and I have 300 people. Right. But if I stream right. 10 hours, I only got 50 people. Will they kick me out of the KCIP? Um, I think they want to see at least. I don't, I don't know if I don't know if if you're constantly just bringing in fifty people, and I, I don't know. Uh, but but you're streaming long hours, and you're, and you're still. My guess is because you're putting in the time, they probably won't kick you off because they're not really paying you a lot of money anyway for fifty people. But if if uh, but if you're just streaming two hours, but you can get so many people to view, I mean, still just doing two hours or three hundred, it's it's still okay. I mean, but it's not gonna. It's, you won't be able to live off of that I unless you, you actually I chose. Ask you because like I interviewed a guy recently, King Chief. He knows other people on KCIP, and he told me there's right. uh, some streamers he knows that have twelve viewers. Okay, see, I mm. Interesting. Is your mind blown? I don't know. Yeah, I, that's interesting. I mean, I know KCIP was supposed to help, you know, the streamers that were trying to come up to help them, you know, you know, make a, you know, help out with income. But, you know, but I'm not, I'm not at the office. I don't know what, what it, it's really for or, or what they're, who they're trying to help. Also huge drama today that took place. And Justice. that was with uh, Jake Future. If you guys don't know, accusations came out that Jake Future's uh, kick deal was pushed down to $5 per hour. And the whole internet went yeah. insane. Now, I've got my own type of question for Zondo. What's the breaking yeah. point for you? You on KCIP per hour. Where is the point of no return where you say, fuck it, I'm interested in this thing? Um... 
I mean, the pro, the bottom line is, if I don't make any money, I have to go back home. Uh, yeah, thank you, rookie. <laughs> um, the fact is, if if I don't make money, I've got to leave because um, this is how I this is how I stay here. Um, but you know, I, I'm going to keep trying. I'll, I'll always keep trying, and because I, you know, like I said, I'm having a good time being here, and uh, it's it's something I've never experienced in my life you know being here to be honest it feels like i said oh so this is how rich this is how rich people live you know because you know when i when i had a, a really good subathon i had a, a few dollars and it's like you know they can do whatever they want whenever they want i feel like that this is what they this is what it's like to be rich because you oh. know I, I was never rich Let's put pause. Oil has hosted us with 35 viewers. Thank you so hey, much, Oil. Oil. And Oil, I know who you are. I've even put you in my clips yes. if you check on the YouTube channel. Uh, I know who exactly yeah. who you are. And you are really you should, funny. You should interview Oil too. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah, got a pretty interesting story. Yeah. 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 I'd like to interview you too. Because I know you have also yeah. had huge drama with John. Like I watch your content. Yeah. And you should know. interview John too. Because John's really... Uh, an interesting story too. John was yeah, going on. I think if I interviewed him, I'd want to ask him about Johnny Somali. You know, when he got beat up. Mm. Uh, yeah. And he was there. Yeah. But yeah, I would like yeah, to interview his, both of you. Place. I could even do both at the same time, maybe. Oh, maybe. there you go. Yeah. Maybe. maybe. Thank you, Fake IRL. But yeah, thank you so much for, 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 for hosting. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Oil. Okay, then, as I said, you. But did you give me your answer? What's the lowest you you would go to? Um. Oh no, the answer was until I didn't make any. If I don't make money, I go home. So even uh, will I keep streaming? You take three dollars per hour. I mean, I because I would try to still, you know, get uh, donos. I would try to still make uh, get subs. Um, I would try to, you know, you know, do subathons. I would still try to make it work. But. Zondo's yeah. a grinder, man. Zondo's a grinder. Yeah, but yeah, but if even if I did that and still couldn't stay, well, then that's when I go home. And you know, and if I can't make money here, like survive, chances are I'm probably not going to be able to do it at home. But I would probably still stream for the hell of it for fun in Austin if I had to. Yeah, that would be good. I, I I listen. Money is money. People don't like me saying this, but money is money. <laughs> Even if it's one dollar, you yeah. can you can still do something. Yeah, with, you know, so it's better That's than zero. True. I mean, like it, you know what I mean. Yeah, and you know, and to be honest, like I said, the, the money I'm making now it's supplementing, you know. So, and if I just keep streaming, that's why I do long hours, because um, because the number, my number, you know, like I said, I'm not a big streamer, but I do have a pretty, you know, awesome community, and and you know, and the numbers are getting better. My average is getting better, but uh. But, you know, I'm not like, I'm not suspenders. I'm not Ton. You know, I'm not, you know, Murda. These guys, you know, they get 500 viewers, 600, 700 viewers. I'm, uh, you know, I, you know, sometimes like even on a consistent basis. I've never been that guy. Okay. But before, uh, that question you guys pinned, we've asked him. He said he doesn't catch feelings for any, any of the girls. We've asked him this. No, no, I do. I do. I like him. I just know not to fall in love and get your, and get, and get your heart broken. Daniel, what is wrong with you, Daniel? What is wrong with you? <laughs> it's okay. I, I, dude, I've been caught. I'm paying him in, in, in ladyboys, okay? I'm paying him. In, I'm sending <laughs> ladyboys to, to, to his apartment right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, so let's talk about Bella. Bella, Bella, okay. Bella. Yeah, okay. And the infamous clip, guys. Ask Williams for the clip. Yeah. I know he clipped it. But there's a clip mm. of Zondo licking the feet. You remember? You remember? Yeah. I sucked so, your toes, yeah. My question to you is, were you ever interested in this lady? Um, to, to be honest, she, she's, she is a very beautiful lady. Uh, even in person. She's, you know, I think she's even more stunning. But, uh, but I know she's taken. But when I did that, I didn't know. And, uh, and, you know, somebody said 10 subs, I forget how many subs it was, 20 subs, I think. 
if she, if you know, if if she, if she would let me suck her toes, and and you know, in my mind, I'm thinking she's not gonna let me suck her feet. Are you crazy? But she said yes, and uh, and and so she, and I'm like, and I looked at her, and she was like, I'm like, okay, let's do it. So she wiped her feet. She cleaned her feet, and that's when I did it. And uh, I've never sucked any woman's foot in my life. That was the first. So how did it but feel? Bella chewed. Uh, it was. It wasn't bad. But if Bella too wanted me to do it, it's, I'm down. There's another Bella who's just as sexy and fine as she is. This dude is like he's like he's literally collecting a dictionary of Bellas. <laughs> no, dude, it's so funny. I just happened to stumble. Actually, someone in my chat kind of told me where to go. There's a, there's a beautiful lady. She showed me, he, he showed me a picture. And I was like, there's no fucking way this girl exists. And he goes, no, no, no. Just, just go there. I'm telling you. So I, I decided to go. And when I saw her, I was like, holy fuck. She actually exists. And, um, and, and that's, it was so much fun. And not only that, but she's actually a really cool person. She's fun. She'll play with you with, with the chat. She'll play, you know, she knows how to work the camera. This is good. At least you've got people that can entertain on your actual stream. Yeah, she, yeah she's, she's good. I mean, she, you know, we have a good chemistry together, a rapport to stream. And I've met her husband. And her husband's a super nice guy. And, um, and we, did, we did a swimming stream at her, at her pool. And, we, and chances are we're going to be doing another one. Daniel wants to know whether you would eat ass. I've done it. Yeah. In Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, this, these women, they keep themselves, a lot of these women are clean. As, uh, in a way, I won't go into detail, I mean, but it's awesome. most of the time, they shower before sex. I mean, literally. Yeah, most of, yeah. So, yeah, and, and I've never had, I can, dude, I can say so much, but I don't want to denigrate anybody or, or generalize. But it's awesome. I want to tell you something, Zondo. You've been doing it a long time, so maybe you're more used to it. But you also have to be careful. I know some stories of like these British guys, right? They, the girl, they go home with the girl, right? And they Mm. dumb, right? Because they don't have a middle ground to take the girl to. They take them straight to their apartment or hotel, whatever. Right. Right. If you're smart guys, you actually have a middle area that you take them to. Instead, Mm. instead of your place. So these guys take them to their homes and then what they do is yeah. the girl takes a shower first and then she just lays on the bed yeah. and then you go take a shower and she literally steals your wallet and other stuff. You heard of this? Yeah. 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 No, no. I've actually had a girl steal 3000 baht from me. <laughs> Come on, dude. What's happening, man? <laughs> What's happening? You pulling yeah. for scams? No, I, no. It, it's a girl I met before in the past. The first time I was here. And uh, we were actually cool. She hung out a number of times with me, right? I'm talking about at my place. And we would hang out, whatever, we, you know, and, she would, and sometimes she would just want to sleep over. And, you know, and, and so, and then one day I just realized, like, well, where did my money go? I could have sworn I had some money. And then, you know, and then I, I realized it was her. And, 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 and I, I, I saw her as a friend and she did this. Dang, so I hurt. learned my lesson. Yeah, that was hurt. Did you ever yeah. accuse her? It was about a, it was about a hundred. She knew she was. I, I I was in my boxers, and she had left. I, Cause I was kind of relaxed, but then I was, was going to go into my wallet, and I realized the money was gone. And I went out to the balcony and I said, "Hey, you have my money. You got my money." And she just looked at me, and then it was like in a movie. She kept her eyes on me while the bike rode off. Oh my it's god! So true. Keeping the eye contact yeah. once, once yeah. her money's she kept in your her eyes on me as she, as she drove off. Yeah. So Quillian's asked a very powerful question. This is a clip, okay. pretty much. All right. What do you think of Torn and Nano's relationship? Mm-hmm. Well, okay, so I I'm, I hung out with them in real life, you know, and I've watched their streams, and uh, I honestly thought they had feelings for each other. I I honestly thought she liked, you know. There, there, there's definitely something there between those two, but uh, but it's it's a very weird situation. From as you keep watching and you start learning more details, especially this last time, you know when there was other people involved, I was like, "What the fuck?" You know, that's when you need to walk away. 
And you know, and I, I said before, you know, this could be used as a lesson, or he knew what he was doing. He was just having fun with it. And sometimes, you know, like I said, he, there's guys that fall in love with these girls, and you know, they want to, well, they want to do everything they can to, you know, help them out, or because they do care for them, and um, or it could be an ego thing where they want to be number one. I mean, did you but, watch uh, Torn? Because I watched Torn when he lived in America. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I used to watch him, yeah, yeah. So what, did you notice, like, how he would go to the laundromat, then he'd drive to the camping spot? He, like, his life was very lonely. He was always by himself, right. just sitting quiet all the right. time. Right. I, I think that's the reason why, too, you know. Because when you live a life of solitude, and, and then you find, and then, you know... Then you come to a place like this where everything's at your fingertips and you have the resources to have a really good time. And then some girl just rocks the world. I can see where you can like really just fall head over heels. <laughs> but I've talked to Tom. But, it's, you know, Tom's a grown man. He's going to make his own mistakes. And I, I'm not, you know, you could tell you could give people advice and they're either going to take it or, or they're just going to have to learn the hard way. And uh, and Tan's a good friend of mine. Uh, you know, I, I see friend, uh, Tan's a friend. And, you know, he even said it himself. He goes, I'm a grown man. I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to take him. Whether he, whether he does or not, that's what he's choosing to do. You know, and knowing that, like, when I came here, and I met a lot of old timers here, and the first thing they told me was, because Patia is very different from the rest of Thailand. They said, don't fall in love here because girls come here to, to make money because of the lady bars scene. That's what it is. And don't get me wrong. Some, some, some of these girls, they fall in love. with. They finally find the guy they like, whether it's their perfect looking or it's money or whatever. And uh, but one thing I've learned is don't fall in love here. Just have fun. And, 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 and I'm in that stage of my life where I'm just having fun. So this is why I say it's very ideal for me to be here. Okay, I get you. Yeah. But it's, I mean, don't get me, I'm telling you, man, a lot of people made that mistake where they've, I have, a, I have a personal friend that came here. He fell in love with one of these massage girls. And she, 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 she pretty much took everything he had. It was Just crazy. Thing, right? You can and, lose all everything because yeah. nothing, uh, also not all the assets can be on your name in Thailand. So. Yeah, you can lose everything. I get that. Do you plan to meet some of your viewers in Thailand? I've, I've met a number of viewers. A number of people have sniped me. And, um, and then some of them became streamers. Like M1, Kenny, you know. Uh, and I've met, I've met a lot of people who met me off camera who didn't want to be shown. I've met a number of my chat. What's your body count? Uh, I don't even keep track, to be honest. This guy crazy. But I'm always careful. Yeah, yeah. So you're saying it's like track. maybe th three figures or four figures? Just Thailand <laughs> alone? Um, I, I don't keep track. I mean, I don't make that kind of money where I'm, I'm, I'm hooking up like that. There's some girls I like that I, I see, you uh, know, yes, yeah, that I see again and again. Have you used Tinder? No. Why not? Too many scammers? Um, no, I, I feel like you can just go and walk, walk around and meet somebody. Oh. If I want to meet somebody, I just go walk around. Have you ever tried dating yeah, apps, though? No. I'm old school, man. I've never used any, anything like that. I know Would a lot you of young, younger guys. Dude, you'd be surprised how no, fast I know. you can I, get it. I've never used it. People have told me I'm missing out by not using it, but I don't use it. I've taken I've taken the L's, man. There's girls that I've liked that I've seen that I try to meet, and they'll look at me and they'll just look away. I've I've taken plenty of L's. I'm not everybody's cup say, of tea. I listen, the main thing is that if mm. you, if you try a hundred percent of the time and you get like seventy percent, you have to you have to put a huge output to get some. So like I understand that. Yeah. Instead of just being scared, yeah. like, oh, I can only talk to this person because this person likes me. I think they're like, like you know, some, you know, some guys do that. Like, they, they literally yeah. dumb themselves down. Like, oh, I think this girl yeah. would go for me, so I'm only going to try with her. 
but you're saying that you speak to everyone. I, so, yeah. Yeah. Have you dealt with criminals? Because that's one of the other stereotypes that people who run away from their countries run to Thailand. Yeah. Um, you could try to, you could, you can make some generalizations and there might be some truth to it. Cause it's, you know, because they, they tend to act a certain way, have certain tattoos or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm sure I met some, some guys like that, but you know, luckily I, I met a lot of cool guys. Thank you so much to Zondo coming here. Cause I know he was a really busy guy. It was really hard to sync with Zondo, but we managed to pull it yeah. off. This video, thank you for having me. Brother. We we will sort of yeah. Thank you for having me and upload it to YouTube. I, as I said, like you made time to come here, which is really awesome. In the future, if there's any other updates or any other stories or any in any events that you got in mind, right. you can you can come on mm -hmm. here and like promote it and stuff like that. I don't mind. Okay, okay. I don't mind. All right, yeah. Let me let me talk to some of the people I need to talk to. I, I don't don't worry. I got a we have, we we have DMs, so we're good. I can definitely get in touch with you with a lot of different things, actually. Oh, that sounds interesting. 